Hello everybody and welcome to the third part of modeling a preserve jar in Wings 3D. And if you like this series of tutorials, I will accept donations on PayPal through my Hotmail address. And if you haven't figured it out, it's pretty much the same name I use everywhere. So if you see the name on the video, you know which name to use at Hotmail and the donations at PayPal if you want to make them. Of course, that's up to you. I'm not going to bug you about it. <laughs> Anyhow, right now I'm going to get onto UV mapping this jar. As you can see, it's the one from before, saved, brought back in. So what I'm going to do before I UV map it is I'm going to smooth everything once. Everything. I'll just do it this way. Oop, there we go. And that was a right click on a geometry graph item. See how that works? Okay. So now I'm going to hit S to smooth. And I probably don't want to save over my original mesh, so I will save as Jar Preserve Smooth. There, because it you never know if you want your original low res mesh. But with UV mapping, I'm only going to do the lid and the base of the jar. I'm not going to do the inside of the jar. It's not too often you need a map for that. And on the lid, I'm just going to do the central portion. So, there we go. Right now, I'm going to do the jar. So you select the whole entire jar, because I am doing an object-based UV map. And right-click to bring up the menu, go to UV mapping. There's no other map on there, so you can just use the left-click. It should work the same. This brings up your auto... UV window. You got your main window here still. Right now I am going to select this vertex, switch to face mode. I'm going to grow my selection up. All those faces. Yeah, there's quite a few of them, so you gotta hit plus a lot. All those faces are the ones I'm not going to be UV mapping. So I'm going to click ignore faces. Thing is, once you ignore a face, it's, you can't really unignore it. <laughs> so you got to make sure you get it right that first time. Now I'm going to put some seams on it for unfolding. So I'm going to be marking edges for cut. I'll just pick an edge. I'm going to use the Z axis here. And that's where I'm going to have my seam. Now you will hit L. It puts the seam all the way across. And what I'm going to do now is mark edge for cut. So that marks all those edges for cut. And as you can see, it's now a different color. All those edges. The other edge I am going to mark for cut is this one here. It separates the bottom. When I hit it L now, it's going to select that full loop. Mark edges for cut. Now you notice the bottom is in two halves because of the edges marked for cut. We don't really need it in two halves, so we want it to be one big circle. So, select an edge there and an edge there hit L, it'll draw the edge loop or edge, it's just like a whole series of edges between these two and now we are going to unmark those edges so now you can see it's one big piece but before we start on unfolding because this jar is kind of barrel shaped you don't have a lot of weirdness if you don't mark some more edges for cut because they want to unfold flat. In order to get it unfold flat, you gotta see which portions of the shape are tapered. And I believe it starts from here all the way up to there on the top. So it's like that. It's like we did with the other loops. And we make a ring. And now we mark all those for cut. And the same on the bottom. So 
see how that works. Yeah, mark widgets for cut. So now all those are marked for cut. Things should be set up. So now we just continue. We don't have to paint. So I know you have the option to. Oh, uh, well, like if you're in face mode, you have the option to do charts. But since we're just doing it with the edges, you don't need to do the chart. It's unnecessary for this part. So now we continue. And we're going to do unfolding. Let it do this thing. Now we have all our charts here. This is the bottom. These are the sides. If you look in here, you can see how it allows this pattern projects on here. And this is for alignment and to see if they're stretching. So if they're stretching, it would look weird in here. It's actually a pretty good unfold cut so this should look all right but we don't want one skewed at an angle and this one is ever so slightly mushed we'll fix it first we will rotate chart to y straightens it out a little bit and the other side you can see it's at a goofy angle so, rotate chart to Y. And what else do we need to do? Let's just make sure it's straight. It usually is. Notice it is slightly bent. And so since all these are slightly ever so slightly bent, I think I'll have a fix for it. Going to do oh, that's it. I'm going to have to select all these loops here. First, we'll select the ring on this side. And we'll go between those edges like before. Now we select the loops. And see how that is? The thing is, we are in edge mode here. So, what we are going to do is scale vertical. And we are going to scale vertical. Oops. I just noticed something. You don't want any of those edges on that bottom part. It's like it shares edges with the other sides. So you gotta unselect all these. And you can zoom with the metal mouse button in the wheel. Or if you hold the mouse button, you can do that too. Now I gotta unselect all these. Takes a little while because there's a lot of them. Because this is slightly bowed. I'm gonna fix it. So now that we have all these edges selected, we are gonna unbow them by scaling vertical. And we are gonna scale it, see how that goes. But we don't want negative, we want zero. Now we got gaps between all of these pieces. <laughs> so now we got to fix all of that. So, all these vertical edges, you want them straight to you. So there, there, hit L, and now hit G. 
straight nose out. Do an outer scale again. But this time it's horizontal. And we're going to scale to zero. See how that works? Now remember how we cut all those edges to get rid of the barrel effect when we first made our jar? Now we are going to stitch them back together. all of these and hit G but before we stitch everything back together so if I stitch now it'll get weird I'll show you see it gets weird we don't want that so edit and do we got to unselect the edges on the very edges of our separate charts oops yeah And select these. So we want our charts to remain separate. The same on the other one. Now we can stitch. It might take a while if your computer is older or something. You might have a slower processor, but usually this goes pretty quick. So all those should be stitched. And we do the same thing on the bottom part. Those are selected and just keeping the charts separate, but all the ones in between are selected so we can stitch. And stitch. Still an ever slight bowing from when we stitch together. And do that trick again. Like did before. And again, <laughs> we don't want the bottom faces this area. Yeah, it's tedious, but you gotta do it. Yeah, vertical zero. It gives us some nice square charts.